linguistic society banned any discussions about how language may have begun, saying that it is a toxic subject. It is even less respectable than investigating paranormal phenomena. Ed Galuag must have been born in the wrong year, right? However, when Chomsky came into the stage and published his first book entitled Syntactic Features, the investigation about how language may have begun brought back into the limelight. Chomsky asked questions like, what humans do have in common that made language possible? In Chomsky's generative view, he sees language as an internal mechanism that lies inside the mind. According to Stealth and Chaminade again, to construct a complex tool means constructing a complex language. For 100,000 years ago, the appearance of complex tools were discovered. Do you know what does this mean? This might mean three things. First, it indicates that the advancement was too fast for it to be called evolutionary. It might be contagious rather than inherited patterns. Second is that social mechanisms must have existed to explain the fast transmission that took place. Last is that communication system must have been complex enough to explain the complex knowledge and technology to use the tools. In language or communication, there is an exchange of speech sounds like ka, s, j, and may seem valueless. But these valueless sounds may have importance when blurted out in a scenario of permissive importance of a social environment of exchange. And we may refer to this as human culture. On the one hand, when we play, we belong to a specific fantasy in which it has its own roots. And some of the realistics in here are being modified or incorporated to the play per se. For example, we may play a biting game and act as though we are really biting each other, but still bear no intention of biting each other at all, which is the primary aim of the word biting. In short, the actions in a play simultaneously represent the reality and still deny it. This corresponds to the representational value of words. A word like cup can both deny and represent the real world. For example, I can use it in the concept of a sports event and may pertain to the World Cup and also I, while conversing in a coffee shop, I can say that I want a cup of tea and still be semantically correct. And lastly, I may refer to the actual cup that is used to cover my head, like for an instance like this, when the sun is shining. The Like what is said here, according to 1998, language uses the same conditional representation as play and, like play, relies on the receiver being willing to accept the arbitrary representations offered by the sender. And therefore, language, just like play, has arbitraries as its key features. One type of play specific to humans is the language itself. Our willingness to cooperate together in a signaling environment which remits, permits speculation, opinion, and fantasy seems to be a unique nature of us. On the other hand, grammar or the set of rules in a language requires hierarchy which in turn creates the need for, a, for a structuring rules while hierarchy is not a basic requirement of a play. Certainly, the act of using a language is a form of play, an interaction of two or more individuals to occupy a shared imaginary, imaginary or fantasy, where meaning is negotiated rather than reliant on the concept of actuality. As what the author of the wide actual says, 
And lastly, it is the need to communicate particular types of messages that imposes structure since grammar requires hierarchy which does not correspondingly exist in a play. In the part entitled, Language is a Signal of Fitness, the animal peacock is used in an example. Its tail is the cost for it, and therefore reliably indicates to the peahen that this male which pertains to the peacock has the capability to make her produce a fitter offspring. This, only, this is only incorporated in Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. Do talkative partners find their ability as an arbitrary cost of demonstrating a reproductive value? Indeed, language represents a high cost in many ways. First, cognitively, language requires the capacity to remember rules of language which is referred to as grammar and its primary components which are words. Second, the capacity to quickly formulate acceptable utterances to express our intended meaning. Third, the capacity to control the mechanisms of speech articulation in rapid and complex sentences or movements. And lastly, the capacity to interpret a stream of sounds into a stream of meanings. But if language is really a costly sign of fitness, then we would expect it to be a linear process or a one-way signal. And then it would be unequally distributed between the sexes. And of course, it would predominate in the sex that has the lowest reproductive cost. However, there is no massive separation of language capacities by gender. Giving information to a sexual rival, rival rather, is costly because while the amount given by the sender increases the amount that is that have which the receiver has, it will undeniably decrease the former's, which refers to the sender's, since he or she is consumed. We would expect that in a talking competition, it is a common place of a discourse. We would also expect that the ability to produce cons complex rather utterances to be related to the success of breeding. This does not seem to be the case in humans because instead of valuing complexity, we prefer the concept of simplicity of utterances for clarity. If language is seen as a signal of a reproductive fitness that costs too much, then complexity indicates sender's cognitive cost, while duration indicates physical cost, and are what we could value in a speaker. is gastral. Language can be in various forms. It can be in the form of sounds, marks, dots or dashes, or by waving a flag, or even in the form of an arm and hand gestures. Today, we are going to focus on how language is gastral. Language is mode independent. And according to Corbalis in 2003, it can work in various forms of channels. A person can express his thought through moderate gestures. So, how is this possible? A good example is the usage of sign language. The modern deaf community uses sign language as a way to communicate with one another, where they follow rules and construct things. Because of gestures, sign language has this specific place marking. Here in the, here in the Philippines, we use to put our mouth to point something. Like dun dun, while in sign language, an up is an up, and down is down, as well as the front and the back. Apes and primitive times use their gestures more than they use their voice, and their voice is only for emotion. This idea led different intellectuals to study whether gestures comes first or communicating 
using their voice. It might happen that as time goes by, signaling system can become, can become a complete language. We have to remember that language is modality independent and it cannot affect the development of the signaling system. Language is cognition. Cognitive linguistics is an enterprise of linguistics since 1970s that focuses on how we process thoughts using our minds that will turn into language. To identify the connection of cognitive function with no linguistic content to the forms of language we use. Because of gravity, we know that no matter how we change our positions, an up will always be will always be an up and will point towards the sky. But if I say that left or right, you may ask me who's left or who's right. The reason for that is that the direction of left and right varies on one's view. And we can relate this on how grammar is viewed by the cognitive linguist. That it depends on the need to understand the thoughts where complex ideas needs a complex use of language. Can you imagine our society without language? Do you think we'd still have a civilization without it? Of course not, because language is a social construction. We use language in several ways for several reasons, but most importantly, we use it for socialization. Now, human societies have also the features we can find in grammar. First, they are segmented. Human societies consist of individuals who can collaborate in producing solutions for those individuals who can. Second, they are differentiated. There are some individuals who have their own purposes while others have formalized roles in solution in giving solution to their problems. And the third one, they are hierarchical. It doesn't only end in this because social construction or social aspect of language has continuous explorations, which means new introduction, new ideas were introduced and they were based on the fact that language is exchange. Also, many researchers have emphasized the importance of the social construction as a source of language. Social construction has implications for grammar. If the language is the information for a social, for a social group, then it must be flexible in expressing the group's complexities, which means that information should not be limited on that certain group. It must not stay because it aims to signal relationship between others. It must be capable also to place the relationship in space and time since the events are not necessarily current. Language seems to be central to panoply of effects that defines as human. It is seen through various ways and it also helps us in, recognize, in recognizing our capabilities not only for our self-growth but also for building our relationship with others. In relation to grammar, grammar emerged from a human capacity to which involves segmentation, differentiation, and hierarchical or hierarchy. How we see the world affects how we relate to it and the way we relate to the world is what permits us or what permits a level of social coordination unusual in nature. The language is socialization. Wait lang, sige, wag na ikat. The language and socialization does not limit itself in a simple way. Rather, there are cognitive functions behind them. So, we must have a cognitive system to permit cooperation for us to be able to cooperate because there is a human, I, there is a continuous and intertwined development of cognition for cooperation, cooperation itself, and the grammar.